Number 15. The Fates of Richard Parker Edgar Allan Poe is considered the greatest author of Gothic literature. His stories The Raven and The Telltale Heart continue to capture the praise of readers today. Poe has also written several lesser-known stories as good as his others. In 1838, he published his only novel, The Narrative of Arthur Golden Pym of Nantucket. In the halfway point of the novel, the ship Grampus becomes damaged and their supplies run out. Desperate for food, the crew draws straws and the person with the shortest straw to be cooked and eaten. Crewman Richard Parker ended up being killed and eaten. Only two people survived to be rescued in the end. A grisly tale, and one which Poe himself describes silly, but the story turned reality in 1884. The yacht Minionette departed England and set sail towards Sydney, Australia. The yacht was definitely too small to travel that distance, and they didn't bring anywhere near enough supplies. After the ship sank, the crew were stranded on a lifeboat. As in Poe's novel, the crew initially caught a turtle and ate it, but soon after, one of the crewmen began to deteriorate, knowing there was no hope to save their comrade. The rest of the crew killed him and consumed him. The extra eerie part of this story is the crewman's name was Richard Parker. After the others were rescued, they went on trial for murder and were initially sentenced to hang, but were then only given a six-month sentence. Number 14. The Lincoln the Kennedy Mongols. Few empires surpassed the mass that was the Mongol Empire. Stretching from Korea to Hungary, Siberia to Southeast Asia, only the British held more territory than the Mongols. Mongols were known to be fierce warriors, easily taking over foe after foe. One place they never managed to conquer was Japan, though not from lack of trying. In 1274, 15,000 Mongol and Chinese soldiers embarked towards Japan, initially making gains against the outnumbered Japanese. Then, just as Mongol reinforcements and supplies were sailing across the sea, a massive typhoon ripped through the fleet and 13,000 soldiers and sailors drowned. The now undersupplied Mongol invasion force was forced to surrender, and the two nations entered in an easy peace. Less than a decade later, in 1281, the Mongols tried again. This time, the Japanese caught word of the invasion and had better time to prepare 40,000 troops, but a force of over 100,000 combined forces were en route to invade Japan. Unfortunately for them, setbacks delayed the Chinese fleet, meaning the smaller Korean forces made up of conscripts had to face the Japanese alone for a time. When the main force finally landed, it looked as if the Japanese were about to meet their match. Then, in a strange twist of fate, a typhoon smashed into the fleet of 4,000 Mongol ships, leaving tens of thousands dead and only a few hundred ships surviving. It would appear the gods were on Japan's side and determined to halt Mongol expansion into the Pacific. The final devastating blow was the last straw, and Kublai Khan withdrew his forces from Japan, never to return. The Mongols may have outnumbered the Japanese in terms of soldiers, but Japan outnumbered them in luck. Number 13. Identical Twins, Identical Lives With many twins looking identical in every way possible, it's no surprise people joke they can live very similar lives. For this pair, the similarities are so striking it goes from silly to ludicrous. If overwhelmingly intriguing, born in 1940, James and James were adopted three weeks after their birth and were both named James by their respective adoptive parents. However, the coincidences stopped far from there. Both owned dogs named Toy, excelled in math and carpentry. Married women named Linda, divorced, and then remarried women named Betty. The most surprising part of the story is the two hadn't met each other at all. Prior to these developments, James Lewis lived in Lima, Ohio, while James Springer lived in Pequa, Ohio, 48 kilometers away from one another, and Springer's mother believed his brother had passed away. However, Lewis's mother revealed she overheard his brother had been adopted as well. So Lewis made an effort to find him and reunite with information provided by the local courts. Lewis contacted Springer and the two met four days later, both aged 39, with the addition of similar tension headaches and smoking the same brand. The two formed an instant bond and have an unbreakable relationship since their meeting in 1979. The amazing story has sparked interest of researchers studying twins to determine if there is some sort of mental connection with similar stories of amazing coincidences with twins separated at birth. 
Nothing comes to how incredible the story of the two Jameses are. Number 12. The Lincoln-Kennedy Connection Ask anyone who they believe the best president was. Abraham Lincoln and John Kennedy are likely to be within the top five. Both were presidents during turbulent times in American history. Lincoln during the American Civil War, and Kennedy during the peak of the Cold War. The two also had their lives cut short by an assassin's bullet, but their legacies continue to live on, and observant individuals have noticed strange similarities between the two presidents despite them being over 100 years apart. For example, both died of head wounds. Lincoln was elected in 1860 and Kennedy in 1960. Both defeated former vice presidents running for office. Lincoln was shot in Ford's theater, and Kennedy was shot while riding in a Ford vehicle, and both were succeeded by Southernborns. Lincoln by Andrew Jackson of Tennessee, and Kennedy by Lyndon Johnson of Texas. The coincidences have also sparked an urban legend which also claims Lincoln had a secretary named Kennedy, and Kennedy had a secretary named Lincoln. However, this claim is untrue, as no documents show this to be the case. One creepy element which is true is that both had bodyguards named William. Lincoln's bodyguard, William H. Cook, advised Lincoln not to attend the performance in Ford's theater, while Kennedy's bodyguard, William Gere, drove Kennedy through Dallas and had expressed his concerns for the president attending the parade. While most of the claims of a connection between Kennedy and Lincoln are untrue, the ones that are true were all listed here. While a direct connection between both assassinations are unlikely, given the amount of time between both instances, it does call for speculation as to what else could be similar between both stories. Number 11. Mark Twain's Comet Mark Twain is a legend best known for the classics The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Born Samuel Langhorne Clemens on November 30, 1835 and lived 74 years until April 21, 1910. During his life, he became one of the best known authors in American history, which grants him a place on the list in his relation with the renowned Halley's Comet. The astrological phenomenon is the only comet visible to the naked eye and visits near Earth's orbit every 74 to 79 years. Last time it was seen was in 1986 and won't return until 2061. Twain was born only days after Halley's Comet reappeared in 1835 and in 1909 was quoted saying, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It's coming again next year, and I expect to go with it. Quite the declaration. And he even said it would be his greatest letdown if the comet came and went, and he lived after. Sure enough, Haley's Comet came back the following year, in what was its brightest show yet. The following day, Twain suffered a heart attack and passed away. On top of literary genius, it would seem Twain also held the ability to predict the future. Twain got his wish to leave with Haley's Comet, and his books are still enjoyed by many to this day. Number 10. Sacagawea's Lost Family The expedition of Lewis and Clark could not have been successful had they neglected to hire Sacagawea. Born around 1788 in Idaho, she was captured by Hidatsa natives at age 12 and later sold to a French-Canadian trapper who made her his wife. Sacagawea was introduced to Lewis and Clark when they hired her husband, Tucson Charbonneau, as they settled in North Dakota for the winter of 1804-1805. to Charbonneau was to be an interpreter, and Sacagawea was also brought along for these duties. She proved to be valuable by helping them find edible plants and knowing the area and the language of the natives they encountered. She even dived into a river to retrieve important supplies and documents after their boat sank. As they reached the Rocky Mountains, the group encountered a group of Shoshone natives whom they negotiated to buy horses from. Things didn't start off well, but suddenly the tribe's chief Kamehawait walked towards the expedition. In a coincidence of good fortune, Sakagawea immediately recognized Kamehawait as her long-lost brother, and the two had a sweet reunion. With this, Sakagawea successfully negotiated buying horses from Kamehawait. Had Kamehawait not been there, or if Sakagawea had not joined their expedition, Lewis and Clark would have either needed to find another place to buy horses or spend more than they could afford. The reunion was short, as Sakagawea continued with Lewis and Clark, but it certainly provided both with closure and assurance of the other's survival. Number 9. Tamer Lane's Curse 
Behind a great empire is a great ruler. Tamerlane was one of the several Mongol Khans to form an empire based on the one Genghis Khan and Kublai Khan. Tamerlane's empire encompassed all of modern Iran, Iraq, Syria, the Caucasus, Afghanistan, and parts of Turkey. Lasting nearly 125 years, Tamerlane died in 1405 of a flu, and his empire fell 100 years later. Tamerlane issued a warning to those who would dare disturb his resting place saying, "...whosoever disturbs my tomb will unleash an invader more terrible than I am." Quite a terrifying curse, considering Tamerlane's conquest resulted in 17 million people losing their lives. While curses are mostly seen as nothing but empty threats, Tamerlane's appeared to come true. When the Soviet Union uncovered the tomb in 1941, the researchers were unaware of the curse they had unleashed. The local Uzbek citizens begged the excavation to end. Panicked, an unstoppable army would soon sweep through Russia, leaving destruction in its wake. The dig continued and the tomb was opened on June 19th, and the next day, Tamerlane's coffin was opened and his remains examined. On June 22nd, as if true to Tamerlane's words, Nazi Germany began their invasion of the Soviet Union. During their defense of their homeland and conquest offense towards Berlin, an estimated grand total of 8.3 million Soviets passed away. While the Soviets were successful in the end, they came close to defeat on several occasions and lost more people than any other participant in the Second World War. This proves how people should not take curses lightly or they may be subjected to disastrous consequences. Number 8. The 27 Club Celebrity passings are a tragedy and with everyone who passes, people from all over pay tribute. Throughout the years, several high-ranking celebrities have passed away at 27, leading people to believe the age is cursed. Between 1969 and 1971, musicians Brian Jones, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, and Jim Morrison all died at age 27 as a result of substance abuse. These passings were the initial inception of the idea of the 27 Club, but the idea truly came to prominence with the passing of Kurt Cobain in 1994. The coincidence became too great to be ignored, and people wondered if there was a reason for all these people dying at 27. This has, as mentioned above, led people to believe that the age is cursed, or even the speculation that there's a greater conspiracy of either the government or some other organization killing off celebrities who encourage youth rebellion of social norms. Even today, the list grows, most notably with Amy Winehouse in 2011 and Anton Yelchin in 2016. While notable cases have involved substance abuse, many have been caused by illness, accidents, and sadly suicide. The phenomenon has led to scientific study to determine if the age 27 does have a higher probability of passing away for people than other ages. Although most of the celebrities they study did pose a greater risk health-wise due to their substance consumption, although the age 27 is simply a scary coincidence. It's safe to say there is no outside force contributing to the 27 Club, but there is no telling who will be its next member. Number 7. The Wrecks of the Titans The Titanic is the most well-known oceanic disaster of all history. At the time, the largest ship ever built. The Titanic was a modern wonder, meant to carry the richest of people from Southampton, UK to New York. It set sail on April 10th, 1912, but horror struck after it hit an iceberg four days after launch near Newfoundland. The hull was breached and the ship sank, killing 1,500 people. It came as a shock to many people as the ship was declared unsinkable by the builders. It was considered an unpredictable event, but as it turns out, it was unintentionally predicted by a novel written 14 years prior. The Wreck of the Titan was written by Morgan Robertson in 1898 and tells the story of John Rowland. After his discharge from the Navy, he becomes a deckhand on the titular Titan, which hits an iceberg and sinks. Aside from the similar names, both the Titan and Titanic sank in April. Titan was 800 feet long, while Titanic was 882 feet long. Both were called unsinkable, didn't have enough lifeboats for all the passengers, and the list goes on. 
The similarities between the Titan and Titanic have led people to label Robertson as a soothsayer. However, Robertson dismissed the claims as ridiculous, saying his similarities are due to his knowledge in shipbuilding and basing the Titan's events around that. With the Titanic now immortalized in history, it's a shame the novel doesn't share the same popularity it did back when it was released. Read it for yourself and see how eerily similar both events are. Number 6. The Rise of a Tyrant Franz von Stuck was a German painter known for his dark depictions in his artwork. In 1889, he painted a piece titled The Wild Chase, which shows Germanic god Wotan riding a horse, sword in hand. It is one of Stuck's darker paintings, but it would turn out to be much darker than predicted. One of Stuck's admirers was Adolf Hitler, particularly during his days as an artist. From here, Hitler needs no further explanation, but those who have seen the painting have noticed disturbing similarities between it and Hitler's legacy. Furthermore, Wotan in the painting resembles Hitler, leading people to believe Stuck had predicted Hitler's rise to power and the wave of destruction brought with him. It's easy to believe such things since the painting is uncannily foreboding, and on top of it all, 1889 is the year Hitler was born. However, most people believed it was actually this painting that inspired Hitler's strive for greatness, hoping to embody the image of Wotan Stuck had painted. It is certainly an unsettling set of coincidences, in the year it was painted, and Wotan's facial characteristics, and the legacy a madman later brought to the world. Number 5. Inspiration Becomes Reality At 9 years old, Jerry Parr was awed by Ronald Reagan's performance in Code of the Secret Service, in which Reagan plays Secret Service agent Brass Bancroft, working his way through school. Parr was sworn into the ranks of the Secret Service in 1962, working on protective surveys domestically and internationally. He eventually worked his way up to special agent in charge and head of the White House detail in the late 70s. So imagine his surprise when he discovered the president he would next be protecting was none other than Reagan, the very man who inspired his career choice. Only two months after Reagan's inauguration, Reagan visited Ford's theater for a charity event and later recalled an uneasy feeling upon spotting Abraham Lincoln's box seat the night he was shot. He later made a speech at the Washington Hilton Hotel and then left to return to the White House with his wife, the Secret Service escorting him in full force. Parr was present, walking behind Reagan and observing the perimeter. Also present was one John Hinckley Jr., a disturbed man hoping to impress actress Jodie Foster. As Reagan waved to the crowd, Hinckley drew a pistol and fired several shots, hitting four people before being detained by Secret Service and police. Parr immediately went into action and tackled Reagan into the limousine. However, Reagan felt pain in his chest and had trouble breathing. Parr discovered Reagan had been hit in the chest and immediately ordered the driver to the hospital. Initially in critical condition, surgeons were able to save Reagan's life and he continued his duties as president until 19. 1989. Parr's quick reaction saved Reagan from greater harm, and he saw his calling to become an agent as a sign from God. He became a pastor later in life before passing away of natural causes in 2015. Number 4. The Man of the Civil War Imagine being present for the beginning and end of the most costly conflict your country has ever faced. The American Civil War happened between 1861 and 1865 and was the most devastating conflict the United States has ever been involved in, including the First and Second World Wars. While the war began after the Battle of Fort Sumter, the first major battle fought was the First Battle of Bull Run. There to witness the first stages of attack was Wilmer McLean, a resident of Manassas, Virginia. The clash took place on McLean's farm, which was being used as a Confederate headquarters for General P.G.T. Beauregard. Throughout the conflict, McLean supplied the Confederate Army, but soon decided to move after the area was a frequent skirmish point. He and his family settled 190 kilometers away in Appomattox County, Virginia. On April 9, 1865, Confederate General Robert E. Lee and remnants of the Confederate Army sought refuge in the Appomattox Courthouse, the very home McLean had made his own in 1863. McLean, a simple grocer, had been present for the beginning and end of major hostilities between American and Confederate forces, as a fate destined him to be there to see both vents. It was in the parlor of McLean's home in Appomattox where Lee signed the final surrender. Later, McLean would joke, The war began in my front yard and ended in my front parlor. 
Two years after the war ended, the McLeans returned to Manassas and later settled in Alexandria, where Wilmer would work for the IRS for three years. He passed away in 1882. Today, McLean's house in Appomattox is now a historical landmark for its significance, and McLean continues to be known as the man who saw the war begin and end on his property. Number 3. The Last Day of Adams and Jefferson Two of the most famous individuals in the course of the American Revolution and independence were John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Adams was the second president following George Washington, and Jefferson was third. While well, allies through and through, ideologically, the two men clashed. Adams strived for further centralization of the American government, while Jefferson advocated to federalize the new country. In fact, it was what Jefferson perceived Adams' abuse of power during his tenure which led Jefferson to run against him in the 1800 election. As most know, Jefferson won and served two terms. He is celebrated for his efforts to expand west through the Lewis and Clark expedition. The two had a falling out, but were able to rekindle their friendship through a series of letters in 1812, continuing for the next 14 years. On July 4, 1826, both men were gravely ill. Both men would not live to see the next day. These were the last survivors of the original revolutionaries, and they both passed away on the 50th anniversary. They and the other figures signed the Declaration of Independence, declaring the United States as a sovereign nation. For both of them to pass away on the same day is nothing more than incredible, considering how important their roles were in that stage of the revolution. Interestingly enough, Adams' last recorded words were, Thomas Jefferson still survives, not knowing his friend had passed away peacefully hours before. Adams was known to promise he would live to see the 50th anniversary of the signing, and he made true to his word, just barely. Thankfully, he and Jefferson were able to bury the hatchet and left this world together as friends. Number 2. The May 44 Crossword in the first and second quarter of 1944, the Western Allies were already preparing a series of invasions to help relieve the Soviet forces in the East, and in order to regain territory lost to the Germans and Italians. The grand plan was known as Operation Overlord, more commonly referred to as D-Day. Members of the American, British, Canadian, and various other Allied nations would storm the beaches of Normandy to create a beachhead for troops and supplies to operate on mainland Europe. The plan was meant to be the beginning of the end, and military intelligence had worked hard to throw the Germans off the scent. Things were going well, and intelligence indicated that German forces had taken the bait and believed the Allies would land near the beaches of Calais, which was the shortest route across the English Channel. In May, just a month before the landing, intelligence officers began to notice a strange series of answers in the Daily Telegraph crossword puzzle. On May 2nd, the solution to the clue, one of the US, was Utah a codename for the westernmost beach. On the 22nd, the word Omaha was the answer. Then on the 27th, it was Overlord, the Mulberry on the 30th, and finally Neptune on June 1st. All were code words relating to D-Day, and the military staff were now panicked. M15 quickly began an investigation and arrested the school teacher Melville Jones and telegraph crossword writer Leonard Dahl. It was common for spies on both sides to send secret messages in newspaper, so it was suspected this was the case. However, upon Jones' interrogation, it was discovered that Jones and Daw would create puzzles based on suggestions made by students, and one of them was getting the idea from a military notebook he had. Quite a scary coincidence for what was supposed to be the greatest of secrets, but luckily just a false alarm. D-Day went on as scheduled, and the rest is history. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. I'm currently doing a super poll on my Instagram. If you believe ghosts are real, then go to my most recent photo and tap the like button. If you don't, DM me saying why. When you're done, come right back to this video to find out the number one entry. Also, follow me on Twitter at YTChills because that's where I post video updates. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way, you'll be notified of the new videos we upload every Tuesday and Saturday. Number 1. One Day in Sarajevo 
If there is one single event thought to have changed the world, it would be the events which transpired on June 23, 1914. At the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century, tensions began to mount between the European powers. Going deeper, the large Austro-Hungarian Empire began to splinter as the various ethnic groups within demanded their independence. One of the loudest groups were the Serbians living in the recently annexed Bosnia as a means to ease tensions. Heir to the throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand visited the city of Sarajevo on that fateful day, officially to meet with officials and parade throughout the city, but truthfully to celebrate his anniversary with his wife. Members of a group called Young Bosnia, part of the Greater Black Hand, plotted to assassinate Ferdinand as a means to cause chaos within the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. While Ferdinand and his wife rode through the streets, cell after cell of Young Bosnia were either spooked by police or lost their nerve, but one man threw a grenade at the car. It missed and instead injured several guards and civilians. The car fled and was gone. The remaining member to have not fled was Gavrilo Princip, who wandered through the streets devastated and contemplating what to do. Meanwhile, Ferdinand and his wife decided to visit the injured at the hospital and entered the car again. However, the car got lost, took a wrong turn, and stalled outside a cafe. There at the table was Princip eating a sandwich. Knowing this could be his last opportunity, he stood and fired two shots into the open car. Ferdinand and his wife were dead within an hour. In what is by far the most disastrous coincidence in history, a simple wrong turn and bad timing eventually led to the First World War, which engulfed all of Europe and parts of the world into a conflict no one had seen before. Had it gone any other way, our world could be drastically different today. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or, if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!